good to see you. That's right, we're one week closer to the big day. I know a lot of people get wrapped up in the presents and the music, but I love Christmas because I love what Christmas is about. That's right. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. My favorite way to celebrate Okay, is... I feel like we've heard loads about how much you love Christmas. So now we're going to talk about how other people might like Christmas. And everyone, I'm sure, has their own special ways of celebrating, too. I bet some of you have something that maybe has to do with opening presents with family, or foods that you only have at Christmas, and games, and music, and carols. Those are the funnest kinds! Well, for some people. But then, for others, celebrations can be kept a little simpler. And that's awesome too. The important thing is what we remember Christmas is all about, because Christmas is always worth celebrating, and so is Jesus. I think it's a great way to celebrate would be singing and dancing to our new Christmas theme song. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Joy. 
Uh, well, I think of Joy to the World, mm -hmm. Ode to Joy, mm -hmm. um, the word enjoy, like to enjoy something. It's like happiness, right? Yes, but no. Well, all right, so see this ping pong ball? Yes. Imagine this is your life. Now, I'm going to keep take a deep breath, and I'm going to use it. I'm going to blow it out, and that's going to keep this ping pong ball in there. It won't be for very long, but it will work. Okay. So, imagine that my breath is something small, like a favorite meal. So. Wow. I know, it's pretty cool. So, maybe you can help me with the second part. Okay. Which is where the hair dryer comes in. Right. I'm going to give you the ping pong ball. Ooh. You just... Oh. I know, but we're in the same household, so it's fine. So, I'm going to turn on the hair dryer, and you're just going to place the ping pong ball on top. Ready? Yep. Ah! Oh, I wasn't on yet. All right, All right. go ahead. Oh! Ah, science! Oh, I want to do that. Ah, I know, that would have been sick. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, happiness was like my breath. And so, it can only keep my life up, or the ball up, for so long. And it really didn't last all that long. It only lasts as long as my breath lasts. So imagine, like I said, your breath is like, let's say, your favorite food. It may seem so exciting. Just the anticipation, the smell, the sight, knowing you're going to have it. Like but, chicken parmesan? Like chicken parmesan. Or maybe, I don't know, cheese capoletti from Eastside Marcus. But... Once you eat it, it's gone. And once it's gone, it's gone forever. Now, joy is more like the hair dryer. It doesn't have to be a huge thing, but it keeps the ball up. It keeps it going. Imagine the hair dryer being something like friendship or love or doing something you really enjoy and doing it well. This is joy. Okay, so what does joy really have to do with Christmas? Well, why don't I explain after our next song? God sent his son, he's the savior of the world. And now we can call him friend. Sin his son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. Jesus, Savior, Jesus, Savior, we will tell everyone. Jesus, Savior, Jesus, Savior. Son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. God sent his son, he's the savior of the world, and now we can call him friend. Jesus, savior, Jesus, savior. start out sounding not so interesting. Oh, well, I'm sure it'll be fine. Okay. Today's story comes from the book of Luke. It starts out in an ordinary town with an ordinary girl named Mary. Okay, yeah, this isn't starting out so well. It sounds pretty ordinary. Mary 
grew up in a small country town called Nazareth. And when she grew up, she would have learned some things from the Jewish scriptures. Ordinary place, ordinary girl, and you're talking about school. Tarzan, come on, get it together. I know, I know, I know, but stick with me. This does not spark joy in my heart. Okay, but stick with me. Because she knew these things from the scriptures, she would have known that God had a promise to send someone who would bring great joy to God's people. Okay, this this is starting to sound interesting. And Mary was engaged to be married a to... A prince! To a prince! I knew it! She's going to be rich and have nice clothes and no more ordinary life for her. She married a carpenter named Joseph. So she is really destined for an ordinary life. Yep. And that's what she had kind of expected life to be, just kind of ordinary. Okay. But. But? There's a but? Crazy things always happen after someone says but. And you would be correct, because one day everything changed. I'm so ready for this. Is there going to be a series of clips where Mary trains really hard and runs up the stairs and yells, Our Adrian! No, that's Rocky. But, as an ordinary girl, sat in her ordinary room, in ordinary Nazareth, an angel appeared! Well, I hope she wasn't holding anything, because if I were her, I would have dropped it. The angel told Mary, the Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. I don't really understand. And neither did Mary. So the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. Wow, and in a heartbeat, Mary's ordinary day had completely flipped upside down. The angel continued even more. Mary, you will be pregnant and give birth to a son. He must be called Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. Wait, ordinary Mary is about to be the mother of Jesus, the one who is going to bring great joy to God's people. How could this happen? That's what Mary asked the angel. And so what did the angel say? He said, the Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your cousin Elizabeth will have a child even though she is old. People thought she couldn't have children, but she was pregnant for a while now. And that's because God said that all these things would come true. If I were Mary, my heart would be pounding in my ears. Hold up. If Mary's having a baby, and then her cousin couldn't have been that old. Well, her cousin Elizabeth was actually probably closer to being the age of a grandmother, or maybe even a great-grandmother, than an actual mother. So if she could have a baby, anything could happen. Mary's mind must have been blown! What What was she going to do? Well, she got up and she went, her, went and saw her cousin Elizabeth. Now, they didn't have cars or planes, so the trip would have taken many, many days. But when Mary knocked on the door, there was Elizabeth. And you guessed it, she was pregnant. And when she saw Mary, the baby in Elizabeth's stomach jumped for joy. Elizabeth said, Blessed is the child you have. As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside me jumped for joy. You are a woman who has been blessed by God. Huh, I guess God had showed Mary that she could find joy in his extraordinary plan for her. She was so overjoyed that she sang out to God. She was just overflowing with joy. After three months, Mary returned home to Nazareth. She was ready to see how God's plan was about to unfold. God had a good plan for Mary, and he has a good plan for each of us, too. And that brings us to our bottom line of the day, which is you can have joy because God has a plan for you. The Bible, it's 66 books of history stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he 
made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 26 through 56. Mary lived in the tiny town of Nazareth, an ordinary village at the edge of Jewish lands. Nazareth? Can anything good come from there? Mary herself was an ordinary girl. Oh, hello. She grew up learning the Jewish scriptures. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. He will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. When will this happen? Only God knows. It's been hundreds of years. Mary went to fetch water from the well and baked loaves of bread and swept out the hard-packed earth floor. It's important to clean the dirt off the dirt. <laughs> she was also engaged to be married to a carpenter named Joseph. Mary must have expected that her life would follow a very ordinary path until one day when everything changed. Greetings, Mary. Suddenly, right there in the dim room, a brilliant being appeared. Mary probably dropped whatever she was holding, a broom, a batch of bread dough, a needle and thread. Who, me? The Lord has blessed you in a special way. He is with you. Mary blinked, trying to take it all in. The whole room glowed with light. I, I don't understand. Do not be afraid, Mary. God is very pleased with you. Mary couldn't find any words. In one heartbeat, her very ordinary day had flipped upside down. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. He will rule forever over his people. That kingdom will never end. The words of Isaiah may have echoed in Mary's head. A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. He will rule over us. She finally found her voice. How can this happen? I'm not even married yet. The light flared even brighter. The Holy Spirit will make this happen. Your relative Elizabeth will have a child even though she is old. People thought she could not have children, but she has been pregnant for six months now. That's because what God says will always come true. Mary's heart pounded. Her cousin Elizabeth was old enough to be a grandmother, and if she was having a baby, anything could happen. I serve the Lord. May it happen to me just as you said it would. The light faded. The towering angel disappeared. Mary leaned against the wall to collect her thoughts. Elizabeth, I have to go see her. The journey to Elizabeth and Zechariah's home in the hill country of Judah would have taken many days of travel along dusty roads. Finally, Mary arrived. Why, it's Mary. Elizabeth, I have so much to tell you. As Mary spoke, Elizabeth could feel the child inside of her leap and kick for joy. God's Holy Spirit spoke to Elizabeth. God has blessed you more than other women, and blessed is the child you will have. As soon as I heard the sound of your voice, the baby inside of me jumped for joy. You are a woman God has blessed. You have believed that the Lord would keep his promises to you. Mary laughed and cried at the same time as she hugged her older cousin. God confirmed once again that Mary could find joy in the extraordinary plan God had for her. Now tell me your story. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for several weeks. She was so filled with joy, she poured out her heart in a song to God. My soul gives glory to the Lord. My spirit delights in God, my Savior. He has taken note of me, even though I'm not considered important. He shows his mercy to those who have respect for him. He has filled with good things those who are hungry. He has helped the people of Israel who serve him. He has done it just as he had promised to our people of long ago. At the end of three months, Mary returned home to Nazareth, ready to see how God's plan was about to unfold. Christmas. Last week it was all about hope 
And this week we are all about joy. And Mary plays a super important role in God's story when it comes to joy and hope because she was Jesus' mom. And Noah, she must have been scared when the angel first appeared. But in the end, she chose to trust God. She chose to have joy. Just like when we talked about patience, sometimes we have to change our attitude a little bit. Maybe from being like a little scared to being really happy, excited, and joyful. Exactly. If we want to have joy in our lives, we have to make decisions to place where our happiness comes from. And we need to put that on things with lasting happiness, like friendship, family, being kind to others, and making sure we're not placing our happiness on getting things that don't last very long, like money, or toys, or fame, or being the most popular kid at school. And that brings us to the end of another video. It's been a joy having you, and we hope to see you again next week. And hopefully your week is filled with joy, and if you have a hard time finding it, maybe your attitude needs to be adjusted to find that joy. All right, see you all next week.